I'm so glad you guys are here. <laughs> I'm the founder of 1218 Media and the creator of the series, which you're all here for. Welcome to the cast reunion for the award-winning web series, My Life Offline. That's right. Featuring your favorite beauty and natural hair vloggers. These ladies are beautiful. They're bold, they're driven, they're smart, they're fly, they're all of black girl magic, okay? Like you guys, give it up for yourselves here today. <laughs> and My Life Offline is a series that takes a look at their lives when they turn their YouTube cameras off. These ladies built their own social media empires. Let's take a look at the series teaser. Nude photo shoot. Okay, what type of nude? Hey. Some people are choosy with their opportunities. This is making me hot. You won't see me like out there in some video nude or something. Meet the top natural hair vloggers living in different states. I'm Vaughn, also known as Vaughn Monroe, from the south side of Chicago. My name is Dr. Nina Ellis Hervey. I live in Nacogdoches, Texas, right outside of Houston. Leading fairly similar lives. My name is Chime Edwards. I'm from Mississippi, aka The Sip. Hey! With one thing in common. They started a channel and never expected they'd become online celebrities. You started a business on your own, like you created an audience and built that audience. We need you on the marketing team. So all the women at my job look at me as the beauty, hair, and fashion expert. Being a YouTube personality is exciting. Kind of makes you like this pseudo star. Lots of people know who you are, they know your face, and they have expectations of you that are like star quality. Now, they're navigating their worldwide popularity and taking it to new heights. When all of the dice, you were by my side, I'm just a lucky girl. Most of the time when people see my hair and I approach them, I, I think they think that it's a wig and it's weave. And I'm like, y'all, I would not wear this much weave. Like, I had twists and my hair is really long, right? And he was like, hey, what's up, Lil Wayne? I was like, really, weavy? Proving. They're more than just hair. You need to do more hair videos. Well, hair is not my life. You know, I, I got I always had hair. So when people see me doing stuff, it's not to get accolades. It's not for people to pat me on the back. I already pat myself on the back. It's to show that girl that's in the hood that never thought she could be something, that she could be something. We're getting really popular in Chicago. A lot of Chicago artists, producers, like all the people like in the entertainment part of things in Chicago, sort of reach out to us to bring on board to do different things. But the volley, I'm sweating. Woo! Bobby volley, I'm sweating. Woo! It could be because they think we're nice looking. It could be because they just want some energy on set. Or it could be because they want us to share the results with our followers. While trying to explain to friends who just don't get it. What do I do that's so celebrity like? Me talking about my life? I Googled myself and I found all kinds of memes and the relationships they deal with. I like the princess cut. Yeah. Okay. You just like whatever I like. Well, that's my ring. Uh, I mean, I've never been a jury guy, so. That... Yeah, he'll want something really simple, yeah. almost invisible. Gonna... There was one point tonight where he actually fed her a muscle, and it was just so awkward. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Love, life, boyfriends. As a man, my dominant presence is what you should be attracted to. Every man I ever met that was married always told me, don't ever get married. That's horrible! Ex-friends, BFF. I'm not saying oh, that, Nina. I'm, what you don't can understand is every fucking weekend, I'm fucking traveling. You don't get that shit. I'm done. You can be done. I don't give a Turning it on and off has its challenges. I am not a celebrity. I, I have no social responsibility to none of y'all. I tweet it because it's how I feel and I don't care it's how I feel. But for these ladies, they're taking it head on. They couldn't see me sweat. I'm an OG, so no sweat came down. This is my life offline. I'm gonna bring them up on stage in a second, but I do have to say, 
Unfortunately, Chime Edwards, a.k.a. at Hair Crush, couldn't be with us. She had a medical emergency. But we do have, let's give it up for at Miss Vaughn TV. guys here as well. Are you guys ready for this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to look at a clip with Miss Vaughn TV. <laughs> Feeling like I'm ready to go. There we go. <laughs> every time I'm approached by someone I don't know, I react the same every time. Hi, like, you need to tell me who you are and what this is about. Because they will come up to you, like, you'll be in the grocery store or, like, on my way to lunch at, at, while I'm at work, and then people, like, walk to me and be like, are you Vaughn? And I'll just be like, yeah. And then they're like, and then they tell me how they know me. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I kind of loosen up. And then she's like, I was the one who, who made that rude comment about you. I called oh, you ghetto, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Taking off my earrings real quick. <laughs> and, but she apologized, though. And she wanted to hug me. She wanted to take a picture of me. It was so odd. I never get used to it. It never gets old. It is the same every time. I can never understand what will make a girl scream when she sees me. Oh, my God. I want to take a picture with you. So Vaughn, this question is for you. The audience reaction to you in this scene was right. mixed. Some good, others bad, and by now I'm sure you're used to your fans. What do you say to the people who thought you came across, and I quote, this is not me, <laughs> without shouting out the subscriber that you seem arrogant. Let me, oh, let me pass the mic name, over to name. you. <laughs> um, first of all, hey, everyone. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is really exciting. I'm really excited to be here. Um, OK, so that scene, that was really funny. Um, OK, so just a little bit about myself. I am a confrontational person. Like, that's, that's just how I am. Not necessarily in a bad way. I'm just like, I like, I like direct communication. And I feel like the best way to um, handle situations is to get an understanding and to communicate openly. And so that's how I am. And so the kind of fame that came with having a YouTube channel came really quick. And n none of us really expected. We don't, we don't, we never get used to people coming up to us and that kind of thing. So um, I'm from Chicago, the South Side, okay? And it's a, it's a rough side to be from. So when people come up to you and ask you if they know you and they're you know trying to confirm your name, the first thing you think is it's about to be a fight. Mm -hmm. Have I done something? <laughs> Are you coming back from like 12th grade and you want to like have a problem? So you never really know. And and the thing about it is when fans you know come up to you, they're not they don't right. it, let you know right away that they're a fan. They they come up to you kind of like a stranger, like hey, I think I know you from somewhere, you know. And but before I think YouTube, I think is this a confrontation, you know? And so that's what that was all about. <laughs> all right. So does everybody understand that now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Nina. I used to Google myself. I stopped doing that too. I, I told her. I Googled myself and I found all kinds of mean stuff like beautiful brown baby doll. I can't stand her. She always talking about her degrees and you know, all of this. And I'm thinking to myself, if you was 27 with three degrees, you'd be out here on the corner with right. only wearing them. Right. Only wearing the degrees, making sure everybody knew. I'm modest in, in just sharing information and backing it up. So, Nina, oh. when it comes to Googling yourself, you just never know what you'll find, right? When you do a quick search on your name and you find stuff about yourself, it's not always good. Um, are you still Googling yourself? I know you said in that clip that you're not doing that anymore, but do you ever get the itch to do so? I be Googling myself. <laughs> see? <laughs> I don't do it often. I do it every now and again just to see what pops up. More often just like personal information so I can get that going real quick. Um, but when I do, I just like to see what pops up on the popular list. And the top things that come up is, is Nina Ellis Harvey married, which is weird. Married? So I, yeah, okay. it's Nina Ellis Harvey married. That all, that's like the top three searches. Um, so I don't really go into detail anymore. If I see it like on a forum, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna mention the forum. It always. I think I know what's for you. Yes. Is this a safe place? Can we say? Oh, no, this is a live taping, guys. We can't, we can't do that. <laughs> but I try not to go on the forums because what I have to realize is that 
you know, Vaughn, we've talked about this before, is that people don't really know you. Right. They feel like they know you, right. but they don't know your everyday life and your everyday struggles and what you live for, what you don't live for. Yeah. They only see what we show. Right. And so you can't blame them for having their opinions. I think since then I've grown to know mm -hmm. that if they have an opinion, it's better than no opinion at all because well, we'll be you keeping my name in your mouth. Right. Ooh, so, okay. <laughs> BBDD. <laughs> I got to pass it to you. Are you Googling yourself? Do you find things that upsets you? How do you deal with it? Because people are trolls behind yeah. computers. Yeah. No, um, I don't really Google myself. Sometimes stuff just comes up in just internet behavior, like things will come up and you'll run into stuff, but not really. And I kind of, oh, yeah, I don't know, uh, like I said, I, I do direct communication. So if someone's talking smack somewhere else mm -hmm. where I can't respond, then I, that's not really a conversation okay. I even want to be a part of because I can't even tell my side of the story. My heel, right. these are so I just use like my platform oh, to speak about who I am and I'm very open <laughs> about that. And I'm always being real in myself and people can judge it they can judge me based on that, and what I show them is what I want them to see, so. Okay. Since um, shooting season one of My Life Offline, which was 2013, guys, actually, we premiered this series on February 2nd, so it's cool that it's December 2nd that we're having our reunion. So, a lot has changed in your life since then. Let's rewind and take a look. Feeling like I'm ready to go. Yo, so I'm, I'm looking at my, my YouTube um, comments. Somebody asks, now this is a favorites video. It's just all about fashion and hair products. Someone goes, when are you getting married? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because they're tired. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> this, is, this is killing them. single and mingling at the time. You were moving past your relationship with your ex-fiance, Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, today, you are married to Anthony <laughs> and your new mommy! <laughs> <laughs> to the very, very, very adorable Anne-Marie. Look at that. Aww. Where's the aww in the audience? <laughs> uh, look at that. Vaughn is kind of hiding her from us, so this is all we get. She's adorable, very adorable. So talk to us about how you and Anthony rekindled your relationship and what it was like having your first child. Nina. Nina, like, oh pass the mic. <laughs> She's ready to learn. <laughs> well, um, yeah, so during the time of the filming of the, of the first season, me and Anthony had broken up, and it was an issue of dishonesty during that time. I was so mad at him. Oh, man, I remember. But um, we worked through it just on our own. And I think th there was a key player in us getting back together. And a lot of people don't notice. It was actually Michi who kind of got us back together. Um, she basically told me one day um, to forgive. And she's always kind of taught me how to like really embrace like my soft side and just had to be a better person. Like, she's my guardian angel. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she, she's kind of the key player in us getting back together. And I won't go into too much detail about that, but I will say that um, it was a really exciting time, and we did end up getting married um, mm -hmm. last September. And he has seen this uh, season, and he also um, was aware of it when we were filming what and everything. He and he was like, he was kind of salty, but. Yeah, because he but, said a couple um, of things. He like, I gave him the rim back and everything. Yeah. I said, I don't need but this. But he you knew, but it. it was like, there was no, there was no like mystery. He knew how mad I was at him, and he was right. mad at me too. I mean, we were going through some stuff. Right. And, you know, we just kind of got through it, and he, he could find the humor in it. He thought it was kind of funny, like in the end. But, so, um, wait, so did he watch it like before you guys had actually rekindled your relationship? Uh, no, he saw it after the fact. Oh, okay. Yeah, and his family and his friends and coworkers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a little. Yeah, but but you know, he he was a good sport about it. I mean, he's you know. Okay. You know, so it was Give good. Give it up but... for Anthony. Give it up for Black yeah. Love. <laughs> okay. It was one of those situations. Well, it was, it was worth fighting for. I'll, I'll definitely say that. And okay. we have a daughter now. She was born October twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so far, it's been amazing. You know, mm -hmm. you always hear people say, how many people have no children? Like, none at all. You know, you know how you always enough. hear people talk oh. about, like, how amazing <laughs> it is. People, right? And there's going to be this love you never felt before and all this stuff. It is, it's, it's actually better than that. Like, wow. it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, I remember when she was being born, um, I didn't get emotional or cry or anything because I wanted to feel every part of that moment. I didn't want to get lost in it. Yeah. Um, but it was just incredible. But she's a great baby. She, you know, she's, she's a good child. She doesn't cry just to be crying. She only cries when she needs something. And, yeah. you know, um, so it's just, it's been great so far. That's great. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> OK, so now, um, Nina, we were introduced to your very beautiful and extremely sweet mother in season one. And we not only found out how much she means to you, but we also learned something about you that people may not have known. Let's play that clip. Ready to go. I used to watch 60 Minutes because I know I, I was a grown kid. And one time it talked about all these kids that were going to find their biological parents and how some of them were rejected. And I remember even saying then, Mama, I know why I should wait. I didn't think I was going to get emotional. But why I should wait? Because so many of them were rejected. I think the burning question of concern is, where are you in your search for your biological parents? Um, I, I think I'm where I, I should be. Mm -hmm. I'm in touch with my old caseworker. What people didn't, what I didn't say on there, or, or maybe my mom did say, um, is that it's not closed on my end. I have access. It's just that I haven't stepped up to do that just yet. Um, I'm ready now. I wanted to wait until a time where I wasn't looking for anything. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, uh, a lot of people go looking for something from the people that birthed them, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna give you anything. <clears throat> and right now I'm at a place where I'm not looking for anything in my life. I'm happy, it's very full. And so meeting them, whether or not they accept me will not change, and I get emotional thinking about it, but won't change me. The other fact of the matter is that my father is not from America. So we're not even sure that he knows that he has a third child. Um, so that's a whole nother thing, you know, another matter. And so I want to do it when I'm perfectly ready to go on that journey, take that time, um, and not have any assumptions. Because I, and now, like I said, I, I think I am there. I'm not looking for them to accept me. I'm more concerned about my siblings and knowing my nieces and nephews if I have those. So for all I know, they probably watch me on YouTube. So that's, <laughs> a, that's an interesting thing too. Um, but yeah, I think for anybody going through that, I just think that you should not be looking for something. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed as a child, like I said, I was a grown child. Y'all see my mama did not object. Um, <laughs> I watched things like 60 Minutes and those particular women that were looking for their parents, they were all successful, all doing wonderful things, all high-powered women, and all of them were rejected by their biological parents. 60 Minutes followed them to go see their parents, and every one of them was like, I gave you up for a reason, why are you here? And I watched, ugh, okay. I watched one of those women break down you don't know what happens to her after that, you know? So you don't want to live your whole life thinking that somebody owes you something. I want them to want to be a part of my life. Right. Yeah. So that's it. Nina. <laughs> All right, um, tears in the house. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's play the next clip. She inspires me so much. Like sometimes when we're having conversations about business moves that we want to make or different things that we want to do for the YouTube whole stuff, for the whole YouTube stuff, um, Michi will say some things that I'll just be sitting, I'll be looking at her like, that was so, that was such a good idea. Or that was like, that was such a good point that you picked out and like now we can like fix it and make it perfect now because you notice that. Things that I miss all the time because I'm so scatterbrained sometimes, she catches like all the good stuff and then I'll have like this sort of heart flutter moment and I always say this like on my YouTube channel that I had this heart flutter moment. That means like something touched me in my soul where I'm like, I like that. You know what I mean? And she, oh she, does, she does that for me a lot of times and I'll always just be like, 
you nailed it. Like, it's a good idea. She doesn't even get it, though. Thanks. <laughs> That was pretty sweet. You don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a beautiful sisterly bond. I have two sisters. I have to shout them out. Beatrice and Marie Allen. Where's Marie Allen? I love my sisters. And um, when we shot that in 2013, um, a lot has changed for Michi as well. And I'll, I'll let you talk about that. Um, so Michi and I, together on YouTube, we call ourselves the Monroe Sisters because she had her YouTube channel, Michi Monroe. Um, she had her blog, her website, and then I had my channel. So we would do a lot of projects together. Um, so that's who she is. And in 2014, early, um, we had just gotten back from um, Paris, France, she and I, um, doing a project there. And uh, a couple weeks after we returned, um, she had an episode, a neurological episode that was very strange. Um, we rushed her off to the hospital. It turns out she ended up having a stroke. And we later found um, she, had a, she had multiple strokes um, during this time period, but we later found that she, was, um, she had a malignant uh, tumor in her brain. So she was diagnosed with brain cancer. And since the filming of this, she's been, bat she's been battling her fight. Um, she's still fighting. She went you know, in and out of remission. Um, as a result of her condition, she's now um, paralyzed and she has aphasia. I don't know if you guys are familiar with aphasia. It's a condition that stroke victims um, go through where you have a, uh, a challenge with communication, verbal communication. So everything that I was describing in this um, segment to you guys about how well we can communicate and how we connect and everything, we can't do that anymore because she can't talk to me. She can listen to me, she can embrace me, um, we can be in each other's presence, but we can't talk to each other anymore. Now, I still talk to her, I talk her freaking ear off, okay? And she doesn't have a problem with that, but she can't respond to me. Um, so a lot has changed since um, the filming of this show, but you know, I'm, I'm hopeful, so is my, the rest of my family. Um, Michi, her appearance is very different, her ability to communicate is different, but she's still the same spirit. And the eye contact that she can make with you and you, how you can like see into a person's soul, none of that has changed. So we're still best friends. She's still my soulmate, my guardian angel. I call her all these different things, but it's so true because we're so close in age. We grew up so close and tight that nothing can change that. No physical, no brain cancer, nothing can change the bond that we have. Um, but we, we do go through a lot of, um, of challenges with just staying, staying hopeful for her. But I, you know, yeah. It's just a, it's We're just a all, lot. We're always praying for her. Yeah. Always praying for her. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys just, so much. It makes you realize how precious life is, how short time is, and you know, if you have something to to do or someone that you want to love in your life, just show them that love cuz you just never know what will change. Um so we're praying. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um my life offline isn't about um, drama <laughs> at all. And we're going to have a conversation about black women in media after this conversation. But we did have a scene in the series that was the most drama. Even I was kind of like, no, that's my, that's my editor over there, PM. Shout out to PM. And I was like, no, bleep that. I don't, I don't know how they're going to feel about that. Just bleep it. No, I don't know. It was, it was hard for me. <laughs> Because I like to protect them in, in my own kind of way. But let's take a look at the clip that I'm talking about. <laughs> we don't give, Not even we just don't give beautiful a shit about brown people. baby doll. No. I'm scared somebody no, else is Nina. Nina. It's beautiful brown baby doll. It's Nina, it's too. It's not Nina. It, before beautiful brown baby doll came, I changed you. a lot of stuff about me. I lost my weight before I became beautiful brown baby doll. I started well, wearing makeup before I, I became really beautiful, brown, beautiful baby brown baby doll. doll. All of that. I don't mean Nina, and you don't be the celebrity because... We don't I want to don't. see that. What do I do that's so celebrity like? Me you're talking about my life? You're Hollywood. What, yo, what you don't understand is every weekend I'm traveling. You don't get that. Time. I'm done. You can be done. Be done. That's what I'm talking about. I'm done too because I'm 100. Nina, Nina, Nina. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the YouTube comments. The YouTube comments seem to fall mainly on your side. Um, but there were other people who felt that you were unfair to Sonia. That was Sonia, her best friend. You grew up with her, correct? I've known her since I was six years old. Six years old, okay. So where does your relationship with her stand now, and what do you have to say to your critics? 
who say you came across as someone who is full of herself. Again, that's not me, that's YouTube comments, okay? <laughs> Let me first address that. Okay. <laughs> the problem with the world is we give these two-sided things. We say, have confidence in yourself. Mm -hmm. But let me police how much confidence you oh, have in break yourself. Break it down, Nina, break it down. That's too much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> so what we mistaken as confidence, we mistaken it for arrogance, mm -hmm. which comes from a negative place. The problem I have with what people have to say about me and my level of confidence is that I came to YouTube to expose my flaws, not praise my greatness. I came to YouTube to talk about my 108 pound weight loss and show pictures that most people put in the ground forever. <laughs> I gave all my secrets, all my tips, all my tools. I talked about being an adopted child, coming from the hood, doing me. If that ain't more humility than most people ever show in their lives, I don't know what else it is. Mm -hmm. But then you can't tell me not to be proud of myself. Right. So the problem is, what, what wasn't seen by the camera is, Sonia and I went our separate ways for undergrad. She went to Tuskegee, I went to Truman State University. Shout out to my soror over there, Siobhan, what's up, boo? <laughs> um, and a lot of stuff changed for me. A lot of people watched me go through a total transformation for the better. I was very unsure of myself when I came to undergrad. I wasn't, you know, the Nina that I am now, but I always had this great spirit. I was always talented. Played the violin, cello, viola, uh, classically trained in piano. I won Jay-Z's rap contest when I was 17 years old. Do you hear me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My mama told me you going to college. You know? Y'all want some bars? No, I'm joking. Go ahead, Nina. Put some oh. bars. Put some bars. Oh, Lord. You done heard me rap a couple times. I'll spit some later tonight. Later, I'll spit yeah. some. But I was already high on myself, if you will. I just hadn't found myself. So I went off to grad school. You know, I did my thing. I, I, I loved myself there. That's where the weight loss happened. That's when I started YouTube. That's when I started traveling. And I learned more about the world. I learned more about myself. So when she came into knowing me again, it wasn't the same 17, unsure of herself, heavy, not quite there yet, butterfly that sat before her. So that's what YouTube did not show. You know, that's what that episode did not show. And so sometimes what happens with people is they want you to be that same thing that you have been, and they can't accept what's new. Since then, uh, she was on time out for two years. Now, <laughs> when I say that, I loved her to death. But for me, that was a toxic spirit. And she was also at a toxic time in her life. And she, and she wouldn't be mad at me for talking about this right now because we've settled our differences. In fact, I was just in her wedding two months ago. Um, but I did. You know, there were times where she reached out to me and I said, I'm not ready. You know, I, I, I accepted you and everything you came with when I came back into your life. I didn't expect you to be the same person. But the problem I have is that you won't admit what's actually wrong with you. Now I am competition. <laughs> now I have my stuff together and I'm unapologetic about it. Mm -hmm. Now my life is, is fine. My life was fine then, but it was never expected to meet or exceed hers. Self-made, baby. Self-made. <laughs> and God made. Yes, um, yes. And I think that that was the tryst. That was the problem. And so when we actually did sit down to have a powwow, was, which was late last year, um, I appreciated her for being honest. She did tell me. There was a time I was very jealous of you. And she commented about and, the YouTube comments, right? Yeah, she yeah. did. She contacted me when the show was released. And she came to visit me. And um, she said, you know, I'm very sorry. Because when I looked at that, I looked like a salty hater. I really did. And I think... I was, you know, and I think what I had to sit back and think about was this girl has gone through a lot and I wasn't a part of that. And I think, I'm sorry, I'm emotional today. Um, I think a part of that is, 
you know, it wasn't that we closed each other out and I had to tell her that, but I was living my own life and going through my own journey. So a lot of people got left behind. Mm -hmm. That happens. And, you know, and when she apologized, it meant a lot to me that she was able to say what she actually did wrong. Further, I apologize for cursing her out. <laughs> but again, I don't regret it because I am Nina from Berkeley. I am Nina from St. Louis. And when you pull it out of me, you won't get it. <laughs> um, and, and I think she respected that too. She understood what I felt because I did kind of let a lot of that pressure go on her from not just her, but from other people that were doing the same thing to me, you know? Um, and sometimes it's hard to watch a caterpillar turn into a butterfly. It's even painful for a caterpillar to turn into a butterfly. Yes. So I had to understand where she was and her understanding of my growth. Mm -hmm. And I think now we respect that. Yeah. We respect that a lot more. We talk more. Uh, there was a time where I had to tell her, I don't really trust this yet. But I have gotten back to a place where I trust her. And we have known each other since we were six years old. So it was worth salvaging the relationship. Well, I'm glad to hear that you guys worked it out. It's um, Dr. Nina Ella Turvey, your pasta. <laughs> <laughs> pasta Herman. <laughs> so we're going to be taking audience questions. Um, the hashtag is MLO Reunion. And you can tweet at 1218media. But in the meantime, before we get into that, I want to show you our favorite clips. <laughs> no, that's a yup. That's a hey, that's a yup. That's yep. a yup. I am quite excessive in my workout routine, and most people don't like working out with me. Most people don't like hanging with me. They are grueling, and I go full speed and full power dang near all the time. Most people don't like it. I love it though. So I have my own confession. Is this still on? Um, so the butt scene um, that we just watched, I filmed that. Okay? Now I'm, I'm engaged. <laughs> but you got to compliment a woman when a woman looks good. I'm saying. <laughs> and Nina, um, so Craig, shout out to my, um, my DP. We stayed at Nina's house when we filmed her, and Nina's crazy when it comes to exercises. She wakes up at like four o'clock in the morning, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll exercise with you. I was super tired. And so I, I did get up. I think she gave me an hour to sleep, and we're exercising. First DVD. All right, yeah, yeah. Second DVD. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. Third DVD. I was like, um, Nina, I can't. <laughs> so she's very committed. I love you ladies. You guys are gorgeous. You are a reflection of me. Smart, beautiful, driven, seeking a balanced life. This is why I created my life offline, because we don't see that enough. And we're going to talk about it. So do you guys have questions? Uh, you have a question? Ladies and gentlemen, that is Tanya Wright, Wright. from Orange is the New Black. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Maureen, as the yes. executive producer and, and creator of the show, mm -hmm. how has your life changed from inception to, to today? Wow, good so question. good question. My life has changed in the sense that I uh, had an opportunity to know these ladies much better. And um, when I get to know someone, I really care about them. So I'm always like looking for what would be great for them. And I'll call them up and be like, hey, do this, do that. Um, but when I was pitching this show, I did pitch this show to a number of networks. And you know the truth is that Hollywood is a little slow, and they don't know what to do with YouTubers just yet. And I listened to God, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to release this digitally. And I was extremely proud of 
the support that we received from Essence, from Blavity, from Naturally Curly Me, um, the audience comments were just amazing. People really loved the show and they wanted to see a season two. So we're doing a national search for season two cast. And we're really excited about that, but also we're gonna be pitching this to networks again because this belongs on TV, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's give it up for that. <laughs> So I love, I absolutely love, love, love producing, and I love producing content that shows us in a positive light, and that's that's really what I wanted to put out there. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah, sure. You guys, what? You guys don't use Twitter? We were supposed to do like the whole digital thing or on YouTube, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll do the traditional route. Hi, oh, okay. Nina. I'm also uh, Nina, by the way. <laughs> Hi, Nina. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you, how hard is it to have a private life when your life is out there in, on the internet? Um, I would say it's very hard. Um, what's so interesting is that I, aside from being on YouTube, a lot of people, I don't think I've even explicitly said on YouTube exactly what I do but I'm a professor in a doctoral and master's program. I also direct a clinic uh, that I started, which has a waiting list of 30 right now. <laughs> we are, it's moving and shaking. Uh, since even this, a, even since we filmed this, I've earned three, ma three licenses and certifications. Yeah. So people from every sector usually already know who I am. It's so funny. My students, um, students who are not my students, there's people who say, well, how can I get in one of your classes? And I'm like, well, I teach in the master's and doctoral classes. They're like, well, how can I sign up for that? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> uh, everybody always wants to know like, who my boyfriend is, where I'm going to church, what I'm eating. Um, my mama, uh, we were out, I was out with my boyfriend about a month ago, and a subscriber said, hey, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and he looking like, I don't, babe, I don't know her. Like, <laughs> I don't know her. <laughs> and she was like, oh, no, I saw you on one of Nina's videos. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's really, <laughs> you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because you appreciate it sometimes, but then you don't know how far people want to take it. And especially since there's this new thing where, you know, I don't know if you all heard about the young lady that was killed by one of her followers, the girl who, no. um, from The Voice or something? Yeah. Oh, singer, singer. Yeah, yeah. And so you got to be careful because, like Vaughn said, you don't know what they're running up to tell you. Yeah, yeah, they know you. Yeah, they might feel like they're connected to you, but you got to be kind of cautious. And because people know a little bit more about you than a celebrity or someone else, then they, they, some people can use and abuse that information. Um, you know, and, and, and get into your personal life and get into your professional life um, and, and everything. I've had people call our program and say, you know, I just want to come there because Dr. Nina is there. And you know, of course the program is looking like, they excited because they like <laughs> the attention, of course. <laughs> and you know, but it's been good for me because I've stayed the course and this year is 10 year in promotion. So my university has really allowed me the flexibility to be able to do my thing as long as I'm handling their thing, and yeah. I do. So it's been a really good trade-off, but also it comes with some downs. You just got to be careful. Let's give it up for the ladies of My Life Offline. We're going to break for two minutes, and we'll come back and have a discussion. Thank you guys for being so patient. One more time, give it up for the ladies. I love you guys. Hi. <laughs> I love this theme song. Right? It's tight. It is. She got sick. Oh, Let's take no. a picture. <laughs> We're gonna get started again for our second discussion. And um, I'm gonna bring up, oh, before I, I bring um, Africa Miranda up, who is a huge Periscope influencer and um, an artist, back in the day musician, um, actress, just beautiful woman, and, and newly minted 
entrepreneur because she has just released her facial elixir on her line, uh, Beauty by AM. And I'm, I'm so proud of you. But before we bring her up, I do have to introduce you guys to, were you, did you hear The Good Life? Oh yeah, we don't need this. I keep, I keep talking with this and we don't need this. <laughs> um, did you guys hear that song, The Good Life? I'm living the good life. I used to sing, but <laughs> I gave it up. I gave it up. <laughs> but um, I want to introduce to you guys the, the beautiful singer who is my, the My Life Offline theme song that you guys hear before the episodes would play. Alex, can you play just a little tip of it for me? I want to introduce you guys, like, let's, I'm going to snap this. <laughs> Hold on. Let that play a little bit. Hey, 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 hey. Like I'm a rock star. Where's she at? I'm going to introduce you guys to Bayou. She lost her voice. Yeah, it's not a Millie Vanilli thing. She can really sing. <laughs> she, Bayou has always been very supportive. Anytime I need um, music for anything that I'm doing, she's like, yeah. She was supposed to perform tonight, but unfortunately, New York weather. I'm, I'm in LA now, guys. <laughs> So thank you so much. I love the song, and I'm looking forward to new stuff season two. I think we're, uh, we're going to have you do an album again. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Give it up for Bayou! OK, now we're going to start the discussion on black women in media. And Africa, I'm going to let you take over. I'm going to okay. walk on the stage like I'm talent. <laughs> you are. You are. Right. Like, thank you, Maureen. Sometimes. So hey, ladies and gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Um, I have to just give oh, a little background. Maureen and I have known each other from many, many moons ago, as she said, back when I was like singing and performing in New York. Uh, Maureen was always giving people an opportunity to shine. Like even back then, she was putting together showcases and like video projects and all these things. So to see her growth and where she is now and the platform that she's created for these amazing women to tell their stories in such a different way that we need to see. I just want to say, Maureen, I appreciate it. And let's give her another round of applause. So. We're going to start this conversation and bring everybody back on stage. So Maureen and Fawn and Nina, please join me. <laughs> so, you know, the conversation about black women in the media, it is one that is, you know, it always pops up when something happens. And, you know, I have a special relationship with that conversation because I found myself in the middle of it during my time on Bravo in the New Atlanta. And I tell people, you know, I look at my career and even just myself as a black woman, I kind of divide it before my time on that show and after my time on that show. Because I looked at, you know, I didn't really take how seriously I think how black women were represented because I was like, oh, it's just fun. You know, we watch these things. It doesn't really matter. It's not me. It didn't get a little, you know, you hear people say all the time, I'll watch these shows, but it's not me. It's not my friends. So I was like, oh, it's fun. It's going to be no big deal. And then when I experienced, you know, the drama, the violence, the negativity, you know, certain amounts of backlash, it really changed my view and made me realize how important representation is. So with that said, let's start this conversation, ladies. Yes. Now, because of the stigma now that's so attached to reality TV, because of course, in the beginning it was, you know, it was just fun. It was, you know, they call it just mindless entertainment. But now, you know, there is a definite connotation of violence and drama that goes, especially for women of color, with reality TV and this medium. Did you guys have any reservations going into it that, you know, would you be walking into something like that or would that be required of you to make the show a success? I think my first question to Maureen when we were talking was like, is it going to be ratchet? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I said back to you, I'm not doing ratchet. But then I think I said, but I'm a little ratchet. <laughs> yeah, so, I think you did say that. <laughs> so I think that there is a drive for that. Mm -hmm. But I think even me and Vaughn had a conversation about all the shows. It's not just African Americans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, we get highlighted, but if right. you watch some of the other shows, uh, oh, everybody, yeah, they're all doing it. It's ridiculous it on all platforms. I mean, in all races, all yeah. backgrounds, all ethnicities. And so I think, you know, there is a drive and a push for it, but I think what we mistaken too is that some people do want to see just reality. What's really happening right. because that becomes dramatic. Right. But then I think also there's a drive to create drama. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm so. Yeah, and I'm sure you guys learned as you did the show, because once that veil is lifted, 
it's reality, but mm -hmm. you're still shooting a television show. And I think the problem is that many people, especially young girls at home, can't differentiate between entertainment and this is exactly how you should solve a problem, you know, yeah. or resolve a problem. So I think that's yeah. the thing. Now, for Marina Ju as a content creator, what was really your drive? Of, like, you know, what story did you want to tell of black women when you created the show? Well, I, the, the drive behind creating My Life Offline is that when I saw YouTubers, my, my sister, my eldest sister, was the one that actually got me into YouTubers. I never really watched. And I always say that I just became enamored with them because they were sharing their personal stories. They were very real. It was organic. And again, when I looked at them, I saw myself. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, these girls are smart. They're, you know, they're, they're balanced. They're not all about drama. And um, when I came across a cast reunion <laughs> for a show I will not name, um, I was just like, why are these girls fighting? Like, this is like high school. I was like, I, that's yeah. a misdemeanor. Like, why are they scrapping like that? I didn't get it. Yeah. And I wanted to create content that reflected us in a better light. And I was like, why isn't that out there? Yes, yeah. we have drama. Of course, life is full of drama, exactly. but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm taking off my shoe. Oh, right, let me get so these earrings. Dirty. But I'm taking off my shoe, my earrings, and throwing drinks in your mm -hmm. face. Yeah. I think we are better than that, and we need to see a lot more of that. So when little girls are watching us, they have something positive to look up to, right. you know? So we need to create more positive images of ourselves that are realistic. Now, Nina, I appreciate what you said that every, you know, if you turn on any of these television shows, people of every race and ethnicity are, you know, are acting crazy on television, but we are absolutely ah. judged so much more harshly. So for Vaughn, did you feel, you know, a certain, like, extra responsibility to portray black women a certain way when doing this show? Well, um, I knew that I didn't want to look crazy, okay? <laughs> um, I, I have a certain level of... Um, uh, how I want to be perceived that mm -hmm. I need to be responsible for. So I knew I wasn't going to be acting crazy. And um, Michi, Michi and I were doing it together, and she, we were saying the same thing, like, well, we're not going to be doing right. this. Mm -hmm. I just think that at this point in um, time, mm -hmm. with so much reality TV, it's almost gotten to a point where we equate, like, realness with, like, nastiness. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's like, if you ain't cursing somebody out or like, being ridiculous or being, like, over the top, mm -hmm. you know, crazy, right. then you're not being real. You're somehow being fake, and you're exactly. trying to hold something yeah. back. But the reality of it, like I mentioned earlier that I was confrontational, but I also explained that it wasn't about like being ready to fight. It's right. just being ready for direct communication, being ready to exactly. be honest and, and straightforward. Yeah. And the reality of it is I'll do whatever it takes to um, minimize uh, confrontation as much as possible if it does come my way. And that right. is the reality of a lot of, you know, mature adult women. Exactly. You'll do whatever it takes to not have to fight. Right. Yeah. Like nobody, but, that's not what we want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's not what you see on TV. And, you know, it's like you're almost encouraged to be yeah. as physically violent as possible because people are going to laugh at it and they're going to quote unquote relate to it. Exactly. I can't, I, I can't actually relate to that. And there you, you go. Know, well, I couldn't yeah. until that, that, that was the same thing too. Like yeah. I didn't yeah. relate to it. I was like, yeah. why is this the way we're being portrayed? Like, is there, it was one dimensional. Very yeah. one dimensional. We're, we're multi-dimensional mm -hmm. women. That's Very what it was. Yeah. Well, and that's, and that's what's been challenging. I know Maureen, you've sat in many meetings with networks. I've done yeah. the same and they'll tell you that, well, we don't really get it. Like, they're friends. They don't, you know, I had someone tell me I was on a different show that had gotten pitched, and it was a, a friend of mine, and I, you know, we had a business, and it was like a boutique in Atlanta, and this whole thing. And they said, well, well, do you guys fight? Um, have you ever tried to talk to her boyfriend? And we were just sitting there like, is this, you know, and, I, and again, I get that there's certain levels of entertainment that you have to have, yeah. but it just shows that when we go into portray a show, it's like you said, it's such a one-dimensional way that they view black women because yeah. we don't have this space to be quirky or interesting or intelligent, like you said, or be direct, but it not be perceived a certain way. And I think now having a lot more scripted television is starting mm -hmm. to get more balanced because shows like Insecure that everybody's mm -hmm. talking about. Issa Rae. Yes, yeah. you know, yeah. it's Issa Rae. Because I think it's telling stories, because I think that's the problem. Reality television has been the only way our stories have been being told. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And there but haven't been shows like My Life, My Life Offline to create the balance. Exactly. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Black and Sexy TV, but they're like the black Netflix. Mm -hmm. And every time I watch their webisodes, I'm like, normal. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We need more of that. Yeah, we absolutely mm -hmm. do. But with that being said, do you think that there is a space, like, is, do, like, I've heard, heard people say that it's almost too damaging, like, we need to keep certain things, like, in the family. Like, certain stories shouldn't be told or shouldn't be exposed, but do you feel like there is a space for a Cardi B and a Vaughn in telling, like, the breadth of the black woman's story or the, you know, woman of color story? 
I, my I, party. I, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, she's kind of, I was going to say, and that wasn't a shade to her. Regular, but, you know, regular, 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 yeah, we don't have the balance. I think it's their reality. Exactly. And the problem is that we only see that only, reality, right. but there's also this reality. Exactly, yeah. which is great. Yeah, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Um, now, I want to speak a little bit more about the one-dimensional versus the multi-dimensional experience. You all showed so much of your personal lives. Did, was that something, because I know for me going into my show, I didn't really, I think I kind of told myself, like, I'm not going to show that much. But you find as you're filming, mm -hmm. you just mm -hmm. kind of let those walls down and things happen. What was really, did you have any plans for yourself about what you weren't going to show versus what kind of came out when you saw the show <laughs> in the end? I'm going to say I went into that clip where I cursed a lot um, and said, I'm not going to curse her out. I'm going to be good. I'm going to be fine. And I don't think, because I had someone ask me, like, do you think it happened because the cameras were there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. I'm pretty sure she would have gotten cursed out probably anyway. worse um, mm -hmm. if the camera wasn't on. Because I actually, it was a point where I just stopped and was like, hold on. We actually, um, uh, <laughs> so, so we were traveling, uh, Craig and I were traveling, my DP, and we actually turned the cameras off when it, it got it got worse it got than that. More and than that. We have it, but we didn't show that because, again, that's not what we want to show. We, you see enough of it. And I think know? you school yourself before this happens. Mm -hmm. Like, you say, okay, we're going to talk about it, but we're not going to do this. Right, we're not going to go there. Yeah. Even talking to my mother, I was like, I'm not going to cry. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I opened the computer, I'm like, oh, mama, what are you doing? <laughs> So I think it's, you can school yourself, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes it does become very real mm -hmm. on camera. Yeah. And what you don't want to do, I think what happens, and I think everybody here can probably relate, mm -hmm. is that what you don't want to do is stop that emotion. Right, exactly. Because then that looks fake. <laughs> Too. You know, you might be really emotional, but I was like, look, just go with it. You already crying. Don't stop and be like, okay, I'm done crying. Mom, you know. So I think that I schooled myself, but what happened really happened, Yeah, you know. I think I went into it wanting to kind of unleash. I was ready to share more than what I normally do, like on my YouTube video <laughs> tutorials and stuff. Because um, there was a... There was a um, um, a need for it or demand for it type mm -hmm. of thing. Like people were, would ask, you know, can we learn a little bit more about yeah. you? I would love to know like what makes you tick like outside right. of like just a twist out on your video, you right. know? So mm -hmm. I was like ready. When the opportunity presented itself, I was like, let's do it. This is um, I wanted to share more about like who I am because mm -hmm. I wanted to be understood better. Mm -hmm. I'd rather tell my own story than have somebody else, you know, tell come up with you. what they think I am and what, what I'm made of. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't wait to like share and just have it like be like, just like expose myself and let people see the real me. Yeah, I was, I was, that's what I was going for. And now you're vlogging a lot more now. Now I'm vlogging, yeah. yeah because yeah. I feel like this kind of brought it on. People right. were watching this and they were like, this is great. Is there gonna be a season two, right, three, right. four? <laughs> or why don't you start vlogging so we can kind of see more? Right. And I, I started to do that and the sharing is fun. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't, I find that I don't have much to hide. Like mm -hmm. as a, as an individual, as a mm -hmm. human being, like I don't have much to hide. Like I am who I am. Right. I come from what I come from. Like I don't have, you know, anything I need to hide from folks. And I feel like it makes you more interesting when people can, they kind of understand a little bit more about what makes you exactly. tick. Exactly. Yeah. Like the, the life offline. Yeah, the life yeah. offline, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I know a lot of, you know, the ability to be able to tell these stories and feel comfortable is the relationship with the producer. You know, mm -hmm. I, what I appreciated in watching the show, because I know the other side of it, having a very distrustful or, or almost being scared or terrified of the production team because they're manipulating everything. Yeah. How was it for you, Maureen, going into this? Because you don't, you don't work as a typical reality show producer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only thing that was challenging was that these ladies are producers in their mm -hmm. own right. You know, they don't have someone saying, okay, I need you to be here at this time. I need you to dress this way. I need you to say this and mm -hmm. asking all their questions. And I think they had to get used to that yep. like uh, <laughs> okay well I guess I'll listen to her <laughs> but um, but it was really fun for me because I'm like I get to go and ask all the questions yeah. and create this show and I just I am passionate about producing mm -hmm. you know I believe in being passionate about what you do so um, it was it was a beautiful experience for me and I'm looking forward to doing more with Nina and Vaughn I think she's also what she didn't bring up. She was very protective of us yeah. and our brands, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think 
a lot of people would have been. No. It would have been more <laughs> about that story. Yeah, I was going to say, no, it's they okay. would not be. <laughs> Let it go. Yeah. And I can remember even when I knew she was way different was after that fight scene, even during it, she was looking like, Nina, we going to turn this off. Because I was still going. I was like looking at yeah. the camera like, it's cool. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, and I remember her being like, okay, we're going to take a break now. Yeah. And I remember that being like, okay, she really is about making sure we're seen not in our non-real life, right. but mm -hmm. just protective of who we are and what we are. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, it was refreshing to see. Maureen's work ethic is just impeccable. I mean, there's almost a numbness to any yeah. outside factors. I mean, she was focused. Totally. We were filming some of these interviews like at three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember, but Michi was like, I do. I'm not having it. Like, she was yeah, so you sleepy. Were, you were cracking and up. I was laughing at her. Like, yeah, you were like, I know Michi. She was so pissed. Thinking. I was like, she's not having it. Because some people can't work right. well when they're tired and mm -hmm. under pressure and all that. But this one here, I mean, she, and but she kept us motivated. Like right. that was the most, that was the craziest part. Like she was almost like coaching us through it and like making sure we saw the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was something else. Well, it's been it's an, it was an amazing project to see, and I think it was so needed because I think all of us, and I'm sure I feel like I can say for everybody here, like we're hungry to see more, more. Yeah, and just we have so many stories to tell in so many different versions of ourselves. So it's just every time I see like a different black girl on TV, I'm like yes, somebody else. <laughs> like you know, just doing anything, I'm just like okay, good. Like there's just one more. And so. let me just say too <laughs> that I mean, I'm for real. Like I'm so happy this fall season. Like every like I'm just. I'm watching more TV and just more content because there's just content everywhere. Yeah. There's content online, there's content on television. It's just, I love it. I can't yeah. get enough. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just say that, you know, we, I'm a boutique production company. I'm not funded by some rich angel investor. It would be nice if you're <laughs> looking. <laughs> but um, if you have something in your heart that you want to do, don't allow money or challenges to impede that process. Go after it because we are not here forever. We right. don't have all the time in the world. Do what's deep in your heart and go after it relentlessly. I did yes. not let money uh, stop me from creating the show. I did not let the no's from networks stop me from releasing the show. Yep. And um, you just never know what kind of doors will open up when you go after, when you walk in your destiny. So um, that's just a piece of encouragement for everyone here, and, that, and I hope that you receive that and, and inspire the world with what's inside of you. I kind of feel like that. See, I'm like, oh, is that the end? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't, I, you know, you have to learn like, you know, when, when, it hap when the moment when the, happens, when the moment you go happens. with the moment. I think that might be it. So thank you, ladies, for having this conversation and thank just you. adding your stories to just, you know, this beautiful quilt that is being brown and beautiful and being a woman on yeah. television. So I appreciate it. Yay. And thank you, Maureen. Thank you. So thank you guys. <laughs>